Hello and welcome back to Enterprise Architecture. Well friends, my last video got a lot of comments and views for me. Um, way more than I normally get on one of these videos. I was uh, averaging in like the uh, 50s and that one got like, uh, like 4,500 I think at this point. That is a bit above average. Um, so thank you all so much for watching my content. Um, in that video, I was covering a lot of the mods that I've been using in Satisfactory to do some of my more epic builds, uh, sort of like some of the stuff you're seeing in front of you here. Um, so if you didn't check out that one, please go back and check it out. I talk about um, Smart Mod and Area Actions, a whole bunch of really cool mods. So among the comments I got from you all recommending other mods to check out, I got one from JBlaze and SP Putty, both saying I should check out Wire Mod. I haven't really seen anybody using Wire Mod. I know it's based on uh, Gary's mod, which also has something called Wire Mod, um, and it lets you automate a whole lot of things in Satisfactory and control them. Now, I certainly love logic. Uh, I love computer programming, um, and this is exactly up my alley, so I figured I'd give it a shot. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at Wire Mod and some of the things that you can do with it. So. You can unlock this mod right away at tier 1. You just need some iron plates and some iron rods to get going. Everything in this mod is very cheap to build, which I really love, considering the amount of power that you get with it. So, what does that get you? Well, when you unlock it, you first get a couple of tools that you can build, uh, and I've already gone ahead and made those. The uh, wire mod tool is the primary one you're going to be using, but you also want to make yourself a wire mod debug tool to get more information about the stuff that you're building. Um, all of the things that you actually build with it all come uh, from the standard construction menu. You can see here uh, there's gates, there's IO, and then there's other. Those are the three um, main sections and uh, what we're gonna be pulling from today. So to get started, generally have to have some sort of a knowledge of at least basic programming. Um, inputs, outputs, variable types. You should know the difference between a string and a Boolean. These are relatively straightforward concepts, uh, but it is basic knowledge that you're gonna have to have before you can get started with it. So, with that in mind, um, let's just show something really, really simple here. So for instance, if I wanted to um, make a sign that I could customize the input, let's plonk down a sign here, like so. Okay, and by default, of course, it just says shenanigans. This is the default display sign. Now, if I pull out my uh, wire mod tool, you can see here on the left hand side there's all these outputs from uh, this sign um, and there's also uh, going to be inputs that you can use. So of these various items I want to configure those to change what it does. So the simplest way to do this is to just grab a constant. Now a constant basically is just a variable that's going to hold information. You can put it anywhere uh, so we'll just put it on the sign for now. Um, you'll probably want to hide these in your buildings, but uh, just as a uh, proof of concept here. We're going to go ahead and call this uh, name, and we're going to call it a string. That means we're going to enter text, and we're just going to say Enterprise Architecture, because that's the name of the show. Uh, we configure that, and then we save it. Now, once that's saved, what we can do um, is take this as our output, and you can see there on the left hand side I've got outputs name string, so I click that, and then I can attach it to this sign, and I'm gonna put it in string one. And just like that, you can see that the name of the sign has changed to enterprise architecture. Now, constants are great in this because you can actually put multiple values in here. So if I wanted to put not name, I could put a different string in here and just call this, uh, not EA, right? Save that. And now I can choose not name as my string. And when I connect it, it'll change to not EA. And of course, if I want to change it back, I go back to name and then I click and then I click back on text string one and it goes back to EA. So that in a nutshell uh, is how the constants work. Now, just for fun, we can also play with this even more. Let's add another constant. Um, and let's make this one a color, because colors are really fun for signs, right? We use that a lot. Um, and let's go ahead and make this like a deep, deep blue, just like that. Okay, save that. Uh, and we're going to call this blue, right? It's blue, so we're going to call it blue. Confirm. And then we save again. 
Now what we can do is actually take the blue color, you see I'm selecting on the left hand side, um, and I'm going to change this to match the text color. And now you can see the text color has changed to blue. So you can connect all of these things up in various ways. Now that's a, that's a very simple example. When we really get into it, we're going to want to start playing with logic. And this is why I said some basics of programming is going to come in handy. You have these gates, which if you've done any program are going to look familiar. AND gates, OR gates, there's some uh, IF and THEN, um, all sorts of your standard logic components that you would wire together to make things happen. If this is true, then do that, etc, etc, etc. And then you can wire these to various types of machines and whatnot uh, to control the flow of information, or in this case, parts as a result of information. Okay, so let's take a look at a slightly more advanced example. So in this case, I have configured here um, a couple of these, what they call conveyor limiters. Now, all these do is take a binary flag, true or false, whether or not they should allow items through them. I've got two of them set up here and one over here. Now, in front of me, I have put down a button and buttons with a toggle just turn from true to false. So yes or no. So you'll see on the left, I have a green light and on the right, I have a red light. When I click it, all it does is toggle. It flips. You can see green, red, red, green. And that's because the default state, I have a wire going from this button to this light for true and false. And the state is then changing here every time I press the button. And then also in front of me, I have this not gate. And that reverses uh, whatever the output of this is before I'm sending it into this light bulb. Now, those are also tied to these conveyor limiters that I've set up here. Now, this can come in handy if you want to say, control your inputs dynamically into a factory. So over here, I have a constructor set up making plates. And on this side, I have a constructor set up making iron rods. Now, by using this sort of a setup with these limiters to turn on and off, what I can do is have a toggle that gets flipped so that I'm making only iron plates or only iron rods with the iron that's being input into the system. So in that way, you could dynamically configure two adjacent factories and toggle where the inputs are going just at the press of a button. Rather than having to reroute anything or reconfigure anything, you could literally just have a switch that does it. So if you have too many plates and you need more rods, you could press the button. You could do more advanced setups than this with different types of splitters and whatnot so that you know you could control say two thirds over here and one third over here. Um, there's some dials and whatnot and other uh, IO buttons that you can use. So like a slider. So you could say adjust the percentage that is going to the left or the right. All sorts of things you could do and I'd love to play with in a future date. Uh, but for right now, I'll just want to do something very, very simple to say, are you going to make plates or rods with this simple setup. So let's take a look at it in action. If we come back over here, um, this is a button that I set up just to uh, control this limiter right here. And you can see I have from the storage container um, iron ingots coming out and they're just hanging out in here. They're not going anywhere because this is disabled. So if I press this, immediately you'll see they start coming out and into this mechanism. Now, they are, at the start, going to split evenly, per usual. You can't actually control the splitter itself with uh, this mod. It is a disappointment. But you will see that they're getting stopped at the limiter on the right. So that's not making uh, any rods. Now, if we click the button, they'll flip. You'll see these will start moving. This will stop, and they'll start going into the rod direction. Now, this isn't wired up, so you can't really see this in action as how that would really work but it gives you an idea for what you could do. And of course, this doesn't have to go to just a single machine. This could go to an entire factory, um, a whole series of different machines over here. But just, just as a brief example of what you can do with it. Okay, so let's look at a slightly more advanced example. Now here I have uh, a series of 120 belts being fed in here uh, on the left side and on the right side. Um, so those Mark II tier two belts. Um, connecting between these splitters to these mergers, I have Mark 1 belts. So 60 items per minute here, 60 items per minute there. And again, I'm using the conveyor limiters in the middle here to control the flow. Now, these are smart splitters, and on the center channel going straight, it's using the overflow. On the right hand side, it's using the uh, just normal output. So in theory, uh, if these limiters were active, it would be sending its max flow to the right here. 
Now, as you can tell from the light bulbs I put on top, I have disabled the output on these. So as you can see here from the sign, it's getting zero per minute on the right-hand side and 120 per minute on the left-hand side. Now you can imagine that the left-hand side was going to one factory, the right-hand side going to a different factory. Now, by using these uh, 60 per minute belts in the middle, I can control the flow in increments. So here I have set up a slider and a pair of um, greater than control uh, gates. So uh, right now the slider is set to zero. So that means zero items are flowing to the right hand side. Now I set this up to do um, in increments of one unit, but actually this isn't super helpful. You uh, basically are only turning it on after you get to the threshold, which here is 60. So you can't really do any finer grain control based on how I have this set up, but if you used um, more splitters here in the middle, uh, you could control this at a finer grain than 60 at a time. So since I turned it over 60, 60.125, you can see that the light turned on and it's telling this limit to then engage so it can allow items through. Um, so now you can see that the left hand side is dropping from 120 per minute to 60 per minute while the right hand side goes from 0 per minute to 60 per minute. So now it's basically 50-50 split which the slider kind of is indicating here. Half would be going to one factory on the left side, half will be going to a factory on the right side. Now it'll take the um, displays a second to catch up because it's feeding information off of the limiters to project those numbers. Um, but you can see that the split is happening immediately after I enabled that. And just like that, now we're up to half and half. I can then move the slider again because I have a second gate here that turns on this second one. You can see the light just turned on there. And now it'll start moving all of the ingots into the right-hand side instead of just the left-hand side. And again, it'll take the sign a second to catch up, but now we're getting literally uh, no ingots on the left-hand side. Everything is going down the right. And through the magic of editing, you can now see that 100% of the ingots are moving to the right-hand side instead of the left-hand side. So this is all working exactly as expected. Now, you could continue to do this run of uh, splitters and mergers all the way down. You could use higher tier belts. You could add additional splitting up here so you have finer incremental control. Um, you could do a variety of things with this uh, to improve the setup. But this is a very, very basic example of splitting in half or uh, 100%. Um, I'm thinking about using actually this exact pattern here in my uh, new computer factory that I built so that I can have iron screws being created when I need them for computers, and the rest of the time turning this into steel parts um, from uh, the steel plant that I have all the way at the end of this road. So I could then divide up my iron accordingly based on whatever my need was at any given time. So uh, I think this could be a really helpful pattern for people. So let's look at a fancier example. Underneath all of these layers, you can see that I have an oil extractor. I've tried to dress it up a little bit by uh, adding some uh, decorations to it, but I did cut a hole in the wall here so we could see what's going on. Now, this is over at my original oil plant that I set up, which I've done a little bit of work on since we last showed this off. Um, but all of my plastic and rubber production are happening over here in this factory still. So, what I've done is down the side of this, I put a series of 10 square signs and they're all black right now. And these are actually hooked up to our production. So if I go and turn back on my oil extractor, you'll see it's starting to extract. Since I have 10 lights, I wanna be able to show how productive this is with a visual indicator. So now that I've turned this on, you can see nine of these lights are on, meaning it's at 90% productivity. Um, in here, I can configure from uh, the actual machine, and you can see right there the production progress number, um, the flow rate number, and the productivity number. That productivity number is what I'm using to put that sign on the back there, um, although I am using a multiplier here um, to multiply that by 10 so that I can get a number from one to 10. And then I use that um, with a series of logic gates for greater than and equal to um, each of these various numbers. So the bottom one is greater than and equal to one, down here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, blah, blah, blah. So if that productivity number is bigger than one, the bottom light comes on. If it's bigger than two, the second light comes on. Three, the third light comes on, and so forth, all the way up the chain. So. Here, because we're at uh, just over 90%, I think it's 99% productivity, 
it's almost all the way on. Now, once my oil uh, reserves catch up inside of the factory here, you can see we're not quite all the way back up because we had turned this off, that'll drop back down to match. So let's look at another example. Here on the middle of the Red Desert, there are these three iron nodes, which I hadn't done anything with. I kind of had been planning to do something with them for a while, and now that I'm about to set up my computer factory, I need a whole bunch of screws. So I figured I'd dedicate all three of these resource nodes to screws. And you can see I built this big sort of industrial looking frame for moving all of the iron up to this top level that I'm on here where all of my other bases are being constructed slowly. So these three nodes are only giving me 60 a piece right now. So uh, that's only gonna be 180 iron that's moving up and along this chain and into the top of this building, which is housing my little iron smeltery. Now, uh, close observers will note that um, I clearly have been watching a whole lot of Fluxo um, and Stin Archie, um, and I've been trying to play with some of the design features that they use. So this uh, using uh, small concrete pillars is a very Fluxo uh, type of design. Um, I did a similar one over here uh, where I'm uh, using inset foundations and some lighting to kind of break up this one. Um, and that's our old high-speed connectors and circuit board factory, uh, which I've been playing with. Um, so in here, I've put these uh, little lights using square signs again. And on the outside, you can see here that the sign says 180 iron ingots per minute. Now, that's actually connected up to the inside of this factory where a whole bunch of logic is going on. Now, over here, I have another conveyor limiter on the way out. Again, as you may remember as I said earlier, you cannot actually connect wire mod to our uh, mergers or our splitters, which is a shame. So we're using the conveyor limiter. So we're actually grabbing the output of this, which tells us um, how many items are going through at a given time. So that throughput number that you see there under outputs, it's the second option down, is saying 180. So that actually is um, being turned into uh, from a number into a string, and then we are appending to it the words per minute, and that's making this sign display 180 per minute. Now, there's also a neat little thing I've done with this base, which you can kind of get to see from these two lights that are flashing. Can you guess what that is? Probably not, let me show you. So here's the main power to this base. As I mentioned before, I usually for each factory will like to put a main power. Let's shut it down and see what happens. So the sign here should start updating in a second, as you can see, and it's slowing down. The number of items that are flowing out are decreasing because of course we've cut the power and we are no longer making ingots. So let's just watch this for a few seconds here and see what happens. Okay, and now you can see, I set a threshold of 60 ingots per minute. And when the production drops below 60 ingots per minute, the lights on the building change. They start flashing red and black. And so does the main sign here that tells me what's going on. So that means from a distance, I can very easily see that something is wrong with this factory. Those red lights are a good indicator that something is not working. Um, you could do it with even bigger signs. You could have this go to a series of light panels um, on your main base. There's a variety of different ways you could do to connect this up, but I just want something very, very visual to kind of show off the principle here. Okay, so how does this mess of logic control the lights flashing? So, the primary indicator that we care about is this less than number. Um, what this does is measure the throughput from our conveyor limiter and determines if it's above or below our threshold value here, the target production number. So if the production is lower than 60, then it becomes true. And that means it needs to go into this error mode. If, however, it's false, meaning productivity is okay, false is actually good in this case, then it's gonna send blue to the signs and it changes all of the signs color to blue. So that's this if else here. So from this less than number, it'll then turn to a if else here and that if else here makes this sign blue when everything is okay. Now, if the productivity is too low, it goes to a different logic route. It goes through this next column and this column to get everything to flash, this was, a, this was a tricky little puzzle for me. So 
I'm using the time and date from my computer. So OS time and date is a little module here that actually reads your system clock. And every second is being read into this next operator, modulo. Now modulo is just basically divide by a number and whatever the remainder is. Some of you all will be familiar with that already. So I am dividing the system time, just the seconds, by two. And that means modulo will return a remainder of zero if it's even, or a one if it's odd. Now that zero and one, I can then map to a Boolean. So zero becomes false, one becomes true. That gets fed into my if else, and that if else has the colors red and black. So what this means is every second, it's gonna flip between states, one and zero, one and zero, true and false, true and false. And that means that those states are gonna to map to our two colors, red and black, red and black, red and black, every second. And that gives us the appearance of this flashing indicator. So when the productivity is too low, this indicator is flashing based on a one second timer from our system clock. Now, you could do a variety of other things here to make this blink faster, or slower or go through a series of different colors. You could use this to scale uh, up and down and fade from black to red. There's a bunch of different things that you could do if you want to get more complicated with it. But that in a nutshell is what I've got going on right here. And that controls all of the lights on the building. So all of these are plugged into the same if else indicator as this one is. And so everything is flashing on the same time and all of them are controlled. You can of course connect as many outputs as you'd like to any of the wire mod uh, modules and that gives us these flashing. So if I turn my power back on, in theory, once this gets above 60 ingots per minute, it should once again turn back to our normal state of blue. So let's just wait a second and watch that happen. And just like that, we are back to OK. You could, of course, play with your thresholds. You could change uh, whether or not that's at 63 or our full 180. I have noticed sometimes the um, limiter uh, doesn't quite calculate exactly right. So you have a wiggle room of about like one item or so, which again is unfortunate. It doesn't work as well as like the efficiency checker, uh, which I showed the mod um, in the last video but it gets pretty close and good enough for our purposes for monitoring things. Now, this could come in especially handy if you're dealing with a uh, factory that's processing nuclear waste or you know your nuclear power plants. That's some place where you're really gonna wanna monitor really closely whether or not things are getting backed up. You could say if uh, you know your uh, storage container is full, that would be a good time to start flashing all of the lights in your base on and off to let you know you need to go deal with that immediately. You could also make it automatically shut down your nuclear reactor if you wanted um, based on the storage containers, how full it is, or any number of other things. So that's just one way that you could manage that based on those sorts of logic gates that we just saw there. Now this mod has a whole bunch of other things in it um, that you really should discover for yourself. It has a whole bunch of other types of sensors, like there's this ranger sensor that's just a, a laser that detects entities passing through. Um, it has a lot of different outputs that you can use, like it has an alarm built in. Let me show you this one. So this is just a really simple uh, laser to detect whether or not enemies or entities or people have crossed over in your base. So if I break this laser... Yeah, that's really loud. I've turned down the audio on here for y'all, but um, that just gives you an idea that uh, you could have a tripwire here that lets you know that hostile enemies have come into your base and it sets off an alarm. You could of course set this to uh, a switch so that, or a latch so that um, when it goes off, it keeps ringing until you turn off the alarm. Any number of other things that you could do with this uh, to kind of make it so that you can detect uh, enemies or people coming into your base or any number of other things. So again, just a lot of really neat stuff you could do. You could also make it so that it uh, tracks if a, a truck comes through or your train has arrived. You know, it could make it um, play a sound at your base or flash a light, any number of other things uh, to let you know when something is passing through. But that's just one of the very many sensors and various things that are in here. Um, as you can see, there's like a damage detector, proximity sensor, 
whole bunch of uh, interesting things that you can use. So that is WireMod in a nutshell. Thanks again to Jay Blaze and SB Putty for putting this one on my radar. Um, I hadn't really seen people using this, so uh, I was really excited to try this out. And I think it's a fantastic mod. I think I'm going to incorporate this into my builds a lot moving ahead. So please do leave comments telling me all about the things that you all are using these mods for, both WireMod and some of the other ones that we've been looking at. Um, give me links to your videos. I want to see all the stuff that y'all are building. This is really cool for me is to learn what other people are doing uh, in Satisfactory uh, with all of these mods or even Vanilla um, learning new building techniques and whatnot. But I think that brings us to the end of this episode of Enterprise Architecture. Thank you all again for watching. I really appreciate all the great comments you all have been giving me. It's been giving me a lot of good suggestions for what I can do to continue to improve my builds and just the content of these videos that I've been creating. So stay tuned for next time. Well, we'll be back here on another exciting adventure. Bye, friends.